Welcome to Smart Center Oxnard in the sunny Oxnard Auto Center at 1511 Auto Center Drive. Let's take a look at the Smart 4-2. Right now, you're seeing the Smart from a very low vantage point. Uh, you're about two or three inches below where my head normally sits when I drive the Smart, but that's the uh, only camera mount position that I could find here at the moment. I uh, wanted to take a drive in the Smart because the Smart is... Um, really undeserving of its bad reputation. The Smart is a very safe car. It is designed with a high strength steel tritium cell structure. And yeah, the uh, arguments can go back and forth and back and forth about uh, small cars versus large cars. But uh, if anyone follows uh, Formula One racing, they know that you can really make a solid small car. And if anyone's ever competed in a demolition derby, um, particularly uh, banger racing, and bangers are the uh, four-cylinder, small, compact, usually front-wheel drive vehicles, and they mix small and large vehicles in those types of races. So you know that if you get, if you have a good cage in the car, it's going to be a safe car. And the whole smart car is one large cage. Uh, also, the transmission. Uh, read any magazine, and uh, they will tell you, or Consumer Reports, or anybody, that the transmission is horrible in the smart car. Well, they really don't understand what the transmission is. Uh, this transmission is an automated manual transmission. That means that the transmission is a manual transmission. It has a single plate clutch and a uh, five-speed gearbox, just like a, a stick shift car would. And the automated part means that there is uh, there are two electronic servos. One of them operates the uh, clutch. The other one operates the gearbox so that you just have to put the car in drive and then you can shift the car and then the car will shift automatically by itself. So what does this mean to you when you drive the car? Well, when you accelerate, uh, just like when a stick shift car accelerates, the uh, revs will increase and then the clutch will engage and then you'll, you'll go. And when you reach a certain speed, then the uh, vehicle will pause, the engine will disconnect from the drive wheels, and then the next gear will be selected. Uh, this setup is used in uh, many high-performance cars. Um, Aston Martin uses a single plate clutch, Lamborghini uses a single plate clutch in its uh, automated manual cars. BMW, uh, up until very recently, used single plate clutches, as did Ferrari. There are several advantages. Number one, it's compact. Number two, the fuel economy and performance benefits of a manual transmission uh, are present in an automated manual gearbox car. However, the convenience of an automatic is present because you don't have to clutch and shift. And number three, a, an automated manual gearbox does not uh, utilize any torque from the engine in order to operate. Um, an automatic, which has the torque converter, um, uses some amount of energy from the engine in order to operate the transmission, so there are parasitic losses associated with that technology with an automatic. Also, a dual-clutch gearbox. Uh, dual-clutch gearboxes are all the rage because they're very, very smooth and similar to an automatic in operation. However, those also uh, take engine power in order to run the pump that operates that technology. And um, this transmission operates very differently in the Smart than it does in, say, an Aston Martin or a Lamborghini, as you can well imagine. In those cars, uh, clutch life is not an issue because rich people buy them and they don't really care how often they burn the clutch up. Number two, uh, it's a high-performance car, so they're going to be driving it on the racetrack. So when you read magazine reviews on those cars, they always complain about how jerky and difficult to control the car is at low speed, but how wonderful it is at high speed when you pull the shift paddles. Well, the smart car is designed, uh, number one, for maximum fuel economy. So the way the car takes off um, is this. The clutch engages prior to the revs really rising all that much, unlike most stick shift cars and unlike the other automated manual transmission cars. Number two. When you remove your foot from the brake, the clutch will immediately engage and the car will move forward, similar to how an automatic transmission creeps. So you know on an automatic, when you lift your foot off the brake, it, it starts rolling in the direction, either drive, it'll go forward or reverse, it'll go back. And uh, the Smart does this in order to uh, improve the convenience when you're driving through traffic, because if you're driving a BMW or a Lamborghini, you've got to constantly go between the throttle and the brake because you have to hit the gas in order to get the car to move 
and then you have to hit the brake to stop the car. Well, in the Smart, you just lift your foot off the brake, the car goes, and then when traffic comes to a stop, you just push the brake pedal down. The shifting. Uh, shifting is designed to maximize clutch life. So the car doesn't slam into gears. It shifts very smoothly and very gently. So as I'm driving the car, um, oh gosh, I, can, I notice there's a lot of vibration on the camera because of where I have it mounted and kind of how I have it mounted. But other than that, it's not herky-jerky at all. And I have a feeling that a lot of these magazines either don't realize it's an automated manual, or maybe because they only get a limited time with the car, uh, they're trying to drive it really, really fast in order to see what its performance capabilities are, which is kind of weird because it's an economy car, not a performance car. And so they're not getting the uh, smoothest shifting. But uh, while it isn't an automatic transmission with a torque converter and that it seamlessly slurs its way from gear to gear, uh, the pause is momentary when it shifts. And this car shifts, fa uh, shifts not only um, smoother, but also a little bit faster than the way most people would shift a stick shift. So if you think of it, okay, this is a stick shift, but I don't have to clutch and shift, then you're going to be in the right mindset to understand that, hey, this is actually really state-of-the-art, and this is going to help you get the best performance and fuel economy out of the engine, and it's a comfortable ride. So uh, I've been shifting here in the automatic mode. I've been letting the car do all the shifting for me. To manually shift, there are a couple benefits to manually shift. First of all, you have full control over the gears, although the computer electronics do an excellent job of gear selection but you can extract the maximum performance out of the engine, both in horsepower and in fuel economy. If you Google hypermiling, you'll see that there are techniques available to people that want to extract every last ounce of fuel out of the engine. And one of those technique, techniques is to use wide open throttle to allow as much air into the combustion chambers as possible and change gear at a very low engine speed. For example, maybe 2,000 RPM is where I would shift if I were hypermiling the smart car. So that is a benefit to using the paddle shifters. Also, if you want to extract the maximum horsepower out of the car, then you can let the engine rev all the way out to uh, the 6,000 RPM redline. Um, with the automatic mode, though, it will shift to redline if you uh, have your foot all the way down to the floor. Also, it will match the revs uh, when it downshifts. So when you pull the downshift paddle, or downshift using the gear stick, uh, the engine speed will increase to the proper speed for that gear so that a very smooth uh, transition occurs. So I'll put it in manual mode now. I'm in fifth gear. I'm going to slow down to uh, 35. Let me downshift to fourth and then third and you can hear the revs increase and then the gear engages and it's smooth. It's not jerking. I'm going to go back up to fourth. Completely smooth, no jerking whatsoever. This transmission allows for no lift shifts. That means that when you uh, perform a gear change, you don't have to lift your foot off the throttle. The electronics will automatically um, pause the throttle action and then uh, disengage the clutch to allow the next gear to be selected. There's also a handy um, indicator in the instrument cluster when you are manual shifting, manually shifting to tell you when to uh, change to, to the next gear up or the next gear down, depending on um, what gear you should be in. It's a little arrow and it's pointing up when you want to, when it tells you to upshift and then it points down when it's uh, better to downshift. And that algorithm is uh, computer controlled and it allows you to get the best fuel economy and comfort out of the, uh, the smart car. And uh, a lot of other uh, really neat things about the smart car, it's very quiet inside. It has um, a very high level of uh, sound insulation. This is the Cabriolet model, and I find that the Cabriolet is a little bit quieter than the hardtop because the hardtop has a, uh, a uh, panorama roof which is made out of uh, polycarbonate, and uh, it tends to kind of uh, reverberate what little road noise there is. Uh, if you're driving a Honda Fit or a Toyota Yaris or a Nissan uh, Sentra and you get into a smart car, you're going to notice, gosh, this is actually really quiet. It's quieter than what I'm driving now because this is quieter than those cars. It has a much, uh, much more comprehensive sound insulation. Plus, with the convertible top, it's also insulated, so it actually insulates you better from sound versus the, uh, the hard top. Put it back in automatic here. The ride quality is fantastic considering the short wheelbase and even com compared to larger cars it actually has a very good ride quality to it. It's very smooth. The suspension has a lot of travel and it's compliant. 
Uh, the wheels are 15 inch, so they're not little tiny bicycle uh, or tricycle wheels as you would imagine a small car would have. So I do notice that large potholes and large imperfections of the road, um, you know, because the tires are very narrow, they can sink into some of those. But luckily, it's the car is small enough where you can avoid a lot of that. And even driving down in L.A., down um, uh, Wilshire Boulevard, going up Mulholland, um, it's really not a big deal. And it's not something, there's no kidney pounding or anything in this car. Uh, one of the um, positive side effects of having such a small, lightweight vehicle is that in order to get really amazing handling, they don't have to make a stiff suspension. So the suspension is very compliant. If you've ever driven a Mini Cooper, which is a much larger car than this, uh, that car rides a lot, a lot more firmly than this does. That has much stiffer suspension. Uh, if you're into sports cars and you drive a smart car, uh, it's going to seem a little soft and a little, you know, there's a lot of uh, body roll in the corners and acceleration squat and brake dive. So uh, if you're thinking maybe this is a sports car, no, definitely not. Um, this is tuned to give you the best possible ride considering the small wheelbase. But if you appreciate cars and balanced handling, this has very balanced handling. And it's like an older German car. A lot of older German cars from the 70s and 80s, even the early to mid-90s, had body roll and really good suspension travel. And this really doesn't sacrifice much in the way of grip, because I've driven the Brabus version as well. And that one has a very stiff suspension um, and wider tires. And it does grip better than this car, and it definitely transitions better from corner to corner. But if you're on Mulholland and the guy in front of you has a, um, a Toyota Camry or a, a Honda Accord Coupe or, you know, maybe even something like a, uh, you know, I wouldn't go with Miata necessarily, but uh, a smaller compact like a Scion TC, um, you can definitely be all over that car. And uh, if you've got someone behind you in a 3 Series BMW or C-Class Mercedes, you can keep them off your tail pretty easily in this car. And uh, as a, a car enthusiast, I really find that uh, this is a great car, and I'd like to own one someday. And uh, if it ever comes to a point where uh, we don't have any cars available to drive here at the dealership or any of our loaner cars, I'll, I'll buy one in a heartbeat, because I don't think I could live without a Smart. I really enjoy jumping in a Smart, and whenever I have some somewhere to go that's far away, you'd think I would take a Benz. But I actually take a smart because A, it's easy to park, B, it's inconspicuous. I can, you know, if I have stuff in it, I don't have people that are going to break into it because it's not, you know, a status car that, you know, maybe have an iPad or something in there. And um, it's great zipping around in traffic. And anywhere in L.A. you go, you're going to have bumper-to-bumper traffic. I've been up to Morro Bay. I've been down to Los Angeles. I've been all over the place, up to uh, Mount Pinos in the middle of a snowstorm with a smart car, um, 20, 21 degrees, 20 degrees, and it really doesn't miss a beat. And people that own smart cars, for the most part, really, really love them. And um, someday, I hope that uh, in the future, people will really appreciate the smart car for, for what it is, because it's great. So uh, that'll be all for today. So thank you for watching, and uh, come see us, 1511 Auto Center Drive, and that is in the beautiful city of Oxnard, California, where it's 68 degrees and it's 91 in uh, the San Fernando Valley. So uh, my name is Barry Rudin, and I'm signing off.